Hi, I'm Nick from The Label Machine and on today's video I'm going to show you how to do a 12 month budget for your record label and music releases. I'll explain record label accounting basics and how you can calculate your label profits. To figure out how much you need to invest, you're going to have to get an understanding of the different types of expenses and which ones are startup costs, which ones are label expenses and which ones are release expenses. So what are label expenses and release expenses? Label expenses are the bare essentials to set up and run your record label. These are non-recoupable expenses and are paid out of the label's share of profits. What's the difference between recoupable and non-recoupable expenses? A recoupable expense is an expense that is directly related to the cost of releasing a song. For example, artwork, PR, remix fees. This is what we call release expenses. A non-recoupable expense is an expense not directly related to the release of a single. For instance, the company formation fee, office rent, your website hosting or employee wages. This is what we call label expenses. To get a better understanding, let's do a recap on some label accounting basics. When you sign a song from an artist, you both agree to a royalty income split, which was declared in the contract that you sign. So for an independent label, typically the net profit is a deal of 50-50 equally between the artist and the record label. Now, before you deduct recoupable expenses, this royalty income is called gross royalty income. And after recoupable expense deductions, it is called net royalty income. You then split the net royalty income 50-50 between the artist and the label. For example, $100 net royalty income equals $50 artist royalty income plus $50 label royalty income. To get your label profit, you add any other sales income. For example, you might have some merchandise income. After that, you then deduct your non-recoupable label expenses. Label royalty income plus other label sales minus label expenses equals your net label profit. Here is an example as illustrated by a small indie record label's profit and loss summary. In this example, you can see the gross royalty income is $11,940. The release expenses to put out that release was $5,600. So the net royalty income was $6,340. That is then split equally between the artist and the label each receiving $3,170. There were more label sales of $2,430, for instance, maybe from merchandise or sync, and then there were the label expenses to come off the top, so $1,252, which means the net label profit for that month was $4,348. Okay, let's talk about label expenses and break down some of the common label expenses for your first year of operation. So first up, we have logo design. Now this price is gonna depend on what you choose as your budget when you do design your logo, but for the purpose of this budget, we're gonna use a lower budget amount of a freelance designer of $150. Next, we've got your website design and hosting. Like the logo design, this will depend on what you decide to use. However, for the purpose of this budget, we're gonna use an amount of an annual fee of around $310 for a website in a box option. Next, you've got your email marketing platform. So this is your MailChimp or your Send and Blue platform. And the annual fee for a professional email provider to manage your email subscribers is gonna be around $180 annually, which I think is what the Send and Blue platform is currently. Next, you've got your distribution fee, and this is going to be an annual fee for setting up a label account with one of the platforms. For example, in this instance, DistroKid, which will be the quickest way to set your, up your label's distribution. Now, if you do get a distribution with a platform that works on percentages, you can omit this line. Next, we've got the Gmail business account. Now, I would recommend using a Google business account for your business as it gives you access to the suite of business applications for document and spreadsheet processing, as well as the ability for Gmail to host your business email address securely. 
Next we've got your company formation fee and this is the service fee to incorporate your record label as an official business. Now this is going to depend on what country and state that you are based in but I've used a fee expense for forming a company in the Delaware state of the US. Finally we've got Adobe Creative Suite. Today more than ever you need to be able to edit pictures on the flies, quickly format them for various social media sizes and purposes. And I would suggest get an Adobe Creative Suite package as it includes all the essential tools to edit pictures, logos, videos. There's a ton of tutorials on YouTube as well for learning about most of the functions that you would use these applications for. Now you might use a design platform such as Affinity and that would be a one-off cost of $70 I believe. This is an optional expense however so that's why we've placed it in the optional costs section. You might already own a editing software or you might be choosing to use a free platform such as Canva. Let's look at other business expenses. Other non-recoupable business expenses worth considering are office rental space, travel, employee wages and business rates. These are not included in the budget template as these will differ greatly depending on what city and country you're based in and if you're starting out will often not be an expense you need to worry about until you are more established. Also with the impact of COVID many labels have chosen to completely go office free so having most of the staff working from home and not even paying rental property at all. Now if you do intend to have these expenses from day one then insert them under the label expenses tab. Most of these expenses are one-offs so if you're already set up you'll only be looking at the reoccurring expenses section. So for planning over the next 12 months, the next most important expense is your release expenses. Once you know what the average expense is for a release on your label and you know how many releases you'll do in the next 12 months, you can then very easily calculate what your 12 month budget is going to be. So the equation is 12 month label operating expenses plus the average release expense times the number of releases you do in 12 months equals the total budget for 12 months. Okay, let's look at what some typical release expenses are gonna be. Before we crack on, if you like what you're seeing here in the video, make sure you click on the like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this on how to start, run, and grow your own independent record label, hit that subscribe button too. Release expenses are directly related to the cost of releasing a single EP or album. For the sake of this example we have kept it to the most common essential and optional expenses but is by no means exhaustive. If you have any other expenses insert a new line into your budget and add those expenses in. First up we've got artwork and this is going to be the second most important creative asset you have after the music and believe me this is the one place you want to spend more money on. I won't go into too much detail, but if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know how much I say branding and artwork is important for your music. So if you are gonna spend some money, spend it here. Now in the interest of being budget conscientious, I put in a budget of just $120, as this is the approximate price when using a service such as designcrowd.com, which I've used in the past and is awesome. Now as a tip, <clears throat> A tip here as most likely you're going to be doing a series of releases so a great way to get a good price is to negotiate a bundle deal. For example agree for five pieces for $100 each which is a healthy $500 contract for the design artists and gives you enough artwork for the foreseeable future as well as having a nice continuity across your branding. Next up we've got the digital release fee. Now if you're using a self distribution model which will be very likely if you're starting out then most platforms will charge some upload fee or a fee to have the music available all platforms for eternity. DistroKid is an example of one of those platforms. For the purpose of this template I'm going to use the DistroKid leave a legacy fee as we've chosen them as the distribution and the label expense section as well. Next up we've got your DJ plugging and PR fee. Now this this is another expense that can be quite a bit depending on your approach and the type of music you are releasing. If you choose to do your own PR in-house, by which I mean you or a member of your team will be doing the PR, then your cost will be a lot lower than using or hiring a PR agency, but there will still be an expense if you use a database service such as Submit Hub. 
Now, if you're a label releasing hip hop or electronic music that's going to be played in clubs for DJs, then you need to get your music out to the DJs. They're going to be playing in these clubs. Now, the easiest way to do this is to go to a separate specialist company that has a trusted list of DJs that subscribe to their database and they will send your music to these DJs and collect feedback on the music, which you'll get to see in a report. It is worth noting that the promo company will review your music and if they don't think your music is up to par or relevant to the database, they won't be able to work with you. Prices for this start at around $250 to $500 for a DJ mail out campaign. Now, if this is your first release on a label, you'll want to hire an independent PR company to help plug the music for radio and specialist tastemakers. For our budget example, we've put this at $300. Next, we've got the digital asset creation expense, and this refers to the cost of creating marketing assets, such as a teaser trailer, a lyric video, or a promo interview. There are tools available for creating these yourself, but for the budget example here, we've put the expense at $200 for creating a lyric video from a freelancer on a website such as fiverr.com. Next, we've got sponsored posts and paid advertising. These days, even if you have 100,000 fans on your Facebook artist page, unless you run sponsored posts or ads, you're only going to reach a fraction of your fans organically. Same goes for Instagram. So you'll definitely want to promote your music releases here and you wanna make sure you've included a budget for this. This is why it's also placed under the essential cost column. For this example, we'll use $300 to create Facebook and Instagram sponsored posts and paid advertising. All right, let's look at some optional release expenses. These are expenses that will vary depending on each single EP or album you release. The general rule of thumb is that the bigger the track and the artist, the more you're going to spend here. If the track has a pop commercial edge and the artist is a rising star, you might want to get an established radio plugger on board to promote to radio stations. Or if you have a track that's been picked up by a big YouTube channel, you may want to make a music video to help drive those views. Remix fees. If you plan on having any remix tracks on release, then you'll need to add this into the budget. If you're an electronic record label, once you're more established, you can have fellow label artists remix each other as a favor. So this might not be an expense to be factored in. But if you want to reach producers beyond your contact list, then you're going to have to pay a remix fee. Remixes will cost anything between $400 for a rising talent to around $5,000 for an established well-known producer. Radio and Spotify plugging. So I've included these together as I see more and more song pluggers doing both radio and Spotify plugging as Spotify plays become increasingly more important, if not more important for indie artists these days as getting radio plays. Music video. If you can budget for a music video for your first release, then do it. It's a great way of making a statement straight out of the gate and an excellent asset for PR and marketing to use and work with. Plus, it gives you a load of extra content to use around the release, such as behind the scene pictures, interviews with the director, interviews with the artists. A ballpark figure to get a decent professional music video without having to pull loads and loads of favors is going to cost you around $4,000. Vinyl costs. So if you want to press up some beautiful vinyl and create something special, you want to work with a disc manufacturing company. It's best to pick a company based close or in your home country so you can keep those shipping costs to a minimum. The more vinyl you buy, the cheaper it gets, but you have to weigh that up against how many you expect to sell. For example, at dismanufacturingservices.com, their pricing table, they say you're looking at around $1,500 for 200 vinyl records or $2,100 for 500 vinyl records. For the purpose of this budget, I've listed 500 vinyl pressing run. Next, we've got recording, mixing and mastering expenses. Now, as we're focusing on the business side of running a indie record label, we've not included music production costs such as studio recording costs or mixing engineering expenses. These days, a lot of indie music is produced in home studios or smaller studios where the artists have often done the mixing, mastering and production costs themselves. This is also true for electronic music and almost all electronic artists mix and master their own tracks. 
If the recording agreement with your artist does include covering the recording, mixing and mastering costs as part of the release, then you will need to put in extra lines in the release section of expenses as these are costs that are recoupable from the music royalties. For this example, as we're getting vinyl pressed, we will need to have a specialist vinyl mastering engineer master this. And this is going to cost us around $150 per track. They'll also probably include a digital mastering in that as well. All right, that's most of the expenses covered. Now, if you're already engaged in the music industry or in your local music scene, I highly recommend that when starting a label, you use all the contacts at your disposal and pull in favors where possible to keep costs down. Somewhere along the line, you'll be able to return the favor in kind. The investment you need to set up your label's first release and the label infrastructure is going to be your biggest investment as when revenue starts coming back into the label you will then have this to reinvest into your operational costs. You can also choose to invest money as you need for each release. A lot of artist-based labels have funded their label this way, using money from other sources of income such as live shows, selling merchandise or even a day job to fund each release. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that subscribe button and support the channel. And if you're wondering what the label machine is, we're an online platform that provides everything you need to run a successful record label as a label manager or a self-releasing artist. We distribute to all the major DSPs, including Beatport for electronic labels, and we have a full stack fan marketing app, email hosting, funnel builder, website builder, merchandise shopping pages, a massive education hub and a community of active label managers and artists. If you want to find out more, click the link in the description. Thank you. Until next time.